name is Kate Finn and I am the trainer for ELB. And today we have a special guest, Jeff Schultz. And what I'll do is I'll just hand it over to Jeff. He's got the presentation. He'll be taking the lead on this. So Jeff, thank you for being here with us today. Great, thanks Kate. And first of all, thank you guys for all, for all attending. Um, I know over the last five or six months, I've certainly attended a lot of webinars myself and I'm always a little leery about attending a manufacturer driven session, right? You think you're getting one thing, but you end up being pitched, you know, some other product for the whole hour or whatnot. So I'm going to do my best and, um, you know, stay away from those sorts of tactics. Um, I do have a little bit of a biased view in terms of some of the tools that we will be talking about today, but um, I'll try and keep it as agnostic as possible. Uh, me being the product guy versus, you know, the sales guy, so to speak. So you're in good hands with a with a Jeff Schultz. Um, that's me on the right hand side, not to be confused with a famous hockey player or mountain guy in the lower left hand corner or Jeff Schultz, the, the deputy. Um, I've been doing this gig for close to 20 years now, specializing in education technology. Um, I started off like many people in, in my network uh, at Smart Technologies. So that's a Canadian accent you're hearing. Um, I um, worked in Calgary, Alberta, Canada for a number of years for Smart. Um, I've had a variety of training and product management roles at ALB. I spent close to nine years in Sydney, Australia. So that's the other accent you'll kind of hear throughout, uh, throughout the presentation. And uh, my job here in the US as VP of Product and Services, kind of responsible for our product portfolio across you know, our education sector, getting into some of the interesting things we do with a lot of the tech companies, and then um, you know, cities and, and local governments. So you all read the purpose of today's session, right? In terms of looking at this concept that we're all faced with right now in education around you know, blended and hybrid learning and you know, some of the tools we're looking at. Uh, from, from my perspective, you know, I want to identify the, the technology. So what are some of the things that you already know about, that you're already using, and what are some new things? Hopefully we can, we can cover some of that. And within that, getting into some of the ideas for the classroom. So, you know, taking something as simple as a, as a traditional webcam that's, you know, built in your laptop. Well, how do we expand on that concept? What, what more can we do with that webcam or other limitations? And we need to look at some other things. So if I can kind of get those accomplished while, you know, having a little bit of dialogue through the chat, uh, let's call that mission accomplished. So from a terminology and definitions perspective, um, again, blended learning, hybrid classroom, high flex classroom was a new one to me. Um, we do a lot of work with uh, Nareva. It's one of our um, one of our manufacturing partners. They're based out of based out of Canada. And um, that's a term that they hear a lot. Um, it may be a little bit more focused in the higher ed space. I don't believe it's a Canadian thing, but you know, just putting out putting that out there as another uh, as another term, but they all mean the same thing, right? We're all talking about a, a style of education in which students learn via electronic or online media, as well as traditional face-to-face -face teaching. So I've got a 12-year-old uh, right now who is in a, a a full virtual situation where she's doing all her schooling um, in the spare room at home and um, if and when we get to a stage where you know the school doesn't go back 100 percent and they are bringing a few kids back you know in person and things well we'll obviously fall into one of these scenarios and which i don't need to spend too much time on this particular slide but i want to pay a little bit of notion to to, to points two and three because if you think about it, they're kind of the same, right? Where we've got that number two, where we've got some students that are split between, you know, in class and virtual. Um, and we're doing that because it's a policy of the school and we're doing it because of, you know, COVID safety and the rest of it. Number three, in my mind, I always want to think, think ahead. I'm, I'm, there's a light at the end of this tunnel and we're not always going to be doing 
you know, virtual learning because of COVID reasons, we might be doing virtual learning for positive reasons. Meaning, you know, we've got, we can put some technology in the classroom that solves a problem today, but then we can talk about some additional uses down the track. Maybe we've got, you know, a facility that we can now use for virtual field trips and excursions and subject matter experts, or maybe we get to a stage where those students who are on some sort of short term medical leave, or even if they're just sick for a few days, we're able to facilitate their attendance in class by, you know, using a lot of the technology we're talking about today, albeit through a, a blended scenario. So what technology is involved? And again, I think this is going to be some, some review for, for a lot of you, but just to kind of spell it out, there's software required, uh, like we're using today, in order to, to, to host the conference. There is a huge range of, you know, software-based solutions. Um, you know, 10, 15 years ago, we needed expensive equipment in boardrooms and classrooms in order to host these video conferences. Now, doing it off a laptop, doing it off my iPad, my, my phone, what have you. So, you're going to fall in one of those realms, Google Meet, Microsoft Teams, Zoom, WebEx. Um, I'm not going to go over the advantages and, and, and disadvantages there. They all do the same thing. They connect, you know, us from a remote perspective, audio, video, and then in my case today, that presentation element. Okay. So there is a, a computer or a, a dedicated compute device uh, we kind of talk about in the AV space. Um, if you're still seeing my thumbnail up on your screen in terms of my vision, uh, the device, the tablet over here is actually connected to a Chromebox. So that is my compute in this stage. And it's running, it's connected to a touchscreen and my meeting interface in terms of join and mute camera angles, that sort of thing is all being run by the touchscreen in that case. So that was my point where it may or may not be the existing in-room computer. I'm not necessarily running everything off my laptop in terms of content as well as uh, the video portion. Uh, we need a microphone to send audio to the foreign students. When you're sitting at home, likely you're using a headset or you're using, you know, the microphone just built into your laptop. Uh, we'll talk about some microphone and, and speaker options um, in order for those foreign students to hear what's going on. And um, we need to be able to hear the far end students, okay? And potentially the local content. So if I'm playing a video here in class, I wanna make sure that that video is heard by everyone in this room. And when one of you as a remote participant is speaking, I wanna make sure that I can hear you. So when we talk about audio, we've gotta consider that conversation in uh, both directions. And then lastly, we need a camera to send video to the far end students. Jeff, this is a lot of different types of technology. Um, and I think we all, having done the virtual trainings and schoolwork, are there certain things that you would highlight to be kind of more important or more useful at this time as we're trying to narrow things down a little bit with it? Yeah, it's a good question, Kate. And, and as I said, I don't want to spend a lot of time on, you know, the, the, the conferencing software and that sort of thing. But if if we're looking at, for me anyways, the number one, the most important part of a conference, aside from connectivity, right, we need the internet in order for us to join, is audio. So if I do something like this, Okay, so not being able to hear that participant or not being able to hear me clearly because there's some other noise happening around or because I'm rustling papers on my desk or, you know, whatever that situation. If we can get the audio solution sorted out, the rest of that stuff I can, I can deal with. As long as you can hear me, I can proceed with, you know, my teaching and, um, and my lesson. So with that said, 
Um, here's a, I, I've always been drawn to this slide. Um, I'll talk about Lightspeed in a few minutes here, but I'll, I want to give credit to them in terms of just, just looking at this visual. This is the story I'm, I'm, I'm trying to describe here, where if I don't have that full information, if I can't hear every single word that I'm, or if you can't hear every single word that I'm, that I'm saying, you're going to miss a little bit. Okay, and unfortunately, when we're in those early years of development, children need to receive a very, very high percentage of that information in order to understand it. Okay, so that's another reason why that 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 audio is so important there, because without it, we're not getting that point across and distance learning is hard enough, right? It's difficult to look at that little thumbnail and get a feel for you know, is that student really comprehending uh, now to have audio issues on top of that? We need to get it sorted. Okay. So what's the problem then? Well, the problem is, and I kind of mentioned this, this scenario already, teachers aren't always sitting in a controlled space. I'm not always in my office with the door closed or the spare room at home wearing a headset and, you know, nobody else is, is making a lot of noise. So we've got to think beyond that, especially when we get into that hybrid situation where it's not just the teacher in the room, there's a teacher plus some, some number of students. Okay, as you well know, classroom are noisy environments. So are, is there any technology out there that we can use to help isolate the primary speaker or to help maybe create a, a, an active listening zone where it hones in on, on those particular people that are talking and kind of drowns out or turns off microphones for, you know, for a different space. Uh, teachers need to eventually move in the classroom. Okay, so case in point here, I'm doing most of my presentation, you know, from, from my computer, but here's a whiteboard behind me. So how is the audio going to change? If I'm now over here on my, on my whiteboard, no longer facing my classroom and I'm writing. Did my audio change a lot? Okay, so we'll talk through some of the scenarios around enabling that presenter, enabling the teachers and the students to be anywhere in that classroom uh, because most importantly, everyone needs a voice. Okay, we want to make sure that it's just that, that it isn't just a teacher-led discussion. We want to make sure that there's a connection between the physical participants in the room, teacher and student, as well as those remote participants. So I, I fully appreciate there's some classroom management to kind of handle there where we're dealing with muting microphones and unmuting. And I know in my daughter's class, they're using a, um, a Google extension uh, that's pushed to talk. So essentially all she needs to do is reach over and hold down the space bar when she wants to talk and then pull her pull her finger off. So it's little things like that that we're going to eventually you know, become really good at this online thing. But you know, the point here is recognizing we're not always in that controlled environment. So the first uh, product I want to introduce is actually one I'm using right now. Okay, so I'm using the Nareva HDL 300. And it's doing two things for me. One, it is my sound bar. It is my speaker that allows me to hear uh, in-room audio, meaning if I'm playing a video or anything like that, that, that audio is coming through the speaker. But the other thing it's allowing me to do is it's, it's the microphone, okay? So we can get full audio pickup in a, in a good size classroom, you know, 25 foot by 25 foot using a single HDL. Okay, now that speaker bar is on the side of this particular meeting room that I'm in right now. Okay, that's where the HDL 300 is, is mounted. And there's a, the, the, the science behind it is something the um, Nareva marketing team has, has branded microphone mist. Okay, so think of a, think of a fog or a mist that, that kind of comes into this room and floods the entire area. Okay, there are 8,172, roughly, uh, virtual microphones that are in this room, which means the system is constantly listening for the active microphone. 
Okay, so as I walk around the room and maybe get a little bit closer to the screen or the camera, um, it's kind of turning off that microphone I was using before, and it's found a microphone in front of me, which meant why when I was back here using my whiteboard, my back is turned to you, and I'm expecting that the virtual microphones that are turned on in my space are sending through the same audio as it was me sitting here in the, in, in the chair facing my laptop or me turning and actually facing the speaker bar itself. Okay, I've seen demonstrations where, you know, we can get under the table and there's a virtual microphone under that table that's able to pick up that, um, that active speaker and send it through to the far end. Now, if you remember from the previous slide, some of the issues we talked about around noisy environments. Well, I'm fortunate now because the boss isn't in and he doesn't have the air con cranked up to where it's 65 degrees in here. So there is no um, HVAC or anything like that happening. But you know, normally in this room, there's that constant hum of an HVAC system. Or think of your rooms that might still have uh, projectors in them. Well, there's a fan in that projector that makes a bit of noise. If you've mounted your microphone beside your projector and it's not an HDL 300, there's a good chance that you're going to get some of that noise feeding back to the other side. Okay, I'm also expecting that some of my just moving papers along, you know, my, my, my desk here, some of that normal noise or some me typing, you know, is not necessarily coming through to the other side because the system is constantly listening for uh, that active speaker. Okay. So if we dig a little bit deeper here, um, why do we need something like this? Why do we need an HDL? Well, we talked a little bit already around some of those scenarios um, around, you know, the, the hybrid classroom where, you know, we, we have a need to take the remote participant, not only the teacher, but the rest of the class and, you know, send that audio to the far end. But think of the other solutions we used to use to solve these problems. We might have had um, some little uh, room microphones, a, a shared lapel or something like that. Think of your multi-purpose rooms where you've got handheld mics that we might be passing around to you know, audience members and speakers. Sharing is no longer caring in, in COVID 2020. So we're limiting uh, those kind of uh, tools right now without having to put a ton of policy in place where we're wearing gloves or hand sanitizing every time we want to pass it around. So if we can move away from those sorts of technologies and focus on a, a, a broader, you know, entire room solution, um, it, it's solving a lot more of those issues than, you know, what we had in the old uh, pendant mic and, and sharing solutions. Okay, so obviously, yeah, we need to be able to hear the student questions from, you know, wherever they come. If, if I'm just using my laptop for audio, I'm either A, having to repeat all the student questions that are coming from the back of the room so that my far end audience can see it, or I'm having to ask that student to get up out of his or her desk, walk towards the microphone, decreasing social distance, and have them speak a little louder into my laptop. Okay, neither of those are very good solutions. Okay. And the last one that I'll mention here, it's got to be easy to use, right? Um, I can talk for days around you know, the rise and fall of the interactive whiteboard in classroom, and a lot of it came down to usability, right? If the products are in that classroom, it, they need to be intuitive, they need to be able to use, and we can't afford to have days and days of professional development just to implement a solution uh, that solves a problem. Would you say this, uh, the HDL is just for the distance learning? Or are there different use cases where we can utilize this HDL when we are back in brick and mortar? Um, yeah, it's another good question. Um, and it's probably gonna lead a little bit into my next slide um, when we're looking at some of the other problems there. But the, the, the biggest thing with the HDL is um, it's meant for facilitating a remote conference. So from the, from the intro where we talked about some of the other ways, once we implement technology to solve a, a hybrid classroom problem, 
Well, here's a classic example where that HDL is now going to set us up for some future activities in the class that maybe we couldn't do as easily before. So some of those I mentioned were, you know, those virtual field trips. Maybe we can do some exciting things where we're video conferencing with, you know, neighboring middle schools that are in the district and things like that. We can start to expand our, our global reach and, you know, get access to some subject matter experts because we're all a little bit more familiar with doing things virtually, right? In the past, I think it'd be unfair to, you know, ask one of your council members or, you know, somebody in your community to come into the classroom to go ahead and do a presentation. Now that particular expert can sit behind his or her desk and enter the classroom virtually. And you know, the experience is going to be good because we invested in the technology beforehand. So the other thing that I want to bring up here is there's a new problem amongst many that we're going to have to solve here. OK, for when we do bring the majority of these students back, either in a hybrid or an, an, an all or one scenario, we've got a mask thing to deal with now. All right. So I'm going to put my mask on. And you're going to probably not hear a huge difference, but it's going to be a little bit of a difference. Okay. Now, again, the HDL system is, is honing in on me fogging up, <laughs> is uh, honing in on, you know, those virtual microphones. And I'm expecting it to do, you know, a good job for, for you guys, you know, in the remote, in the remote sense, you, you could still hear me. I'm still, you know, intelligible in terms of my, my clarity and the rest of it, but it's not helping the group in the classroom, all right? So the mask itself, um, aside from you know, what you see on the screen there in terms of those visual clues or, or cues, sorry, um, but there's a, there's a noticeable reduction in my teacher's voice, okay? Uh, we had our friends at Lightspeed do a presentation for us a little while ago and uh, 12 decibels is, is, is what they say the difference is in terms of me without a mask versus uh, me with a mask, which means in 12 decibels, uh, we, I could give you some examples around what, what things sound like 12 decibels, but the end result is I've got to speak a little bit louder. Okay, and that's going to put increased vocal strain, you know, on me as an instructor because I need to worry about my students in the classroom. So this, this situation is maybe less about that, that hybrid sense. I'm, I'm, I'm less concerned about you guys as a remote audience, and I'm more concerned about the physical students uh, in, in my classroom. How can they better hear me uh, once I have to put that mask on? I like that you brought up the increased uh, teacher vocal strain. Uh, as a former teacher, and I know all of you teachers on this call today can stand up with me with this one, but the beginning of the school year, you sat all summer being able to talk amongst your friends and even to your own children in a normal voice. You return to school that first week of school, your throat hurts. <laughs> you have strained your voice so much just trying to get everybody's attention, all 20 plus students that are in your class. And that's before we had to wear masks in front of our classes. So teachers, I applaud you who are in brick and mortar right now wearing those masks. And I'm sure you're still sipping your hot, your hot coffee and hot tea right now. So Jeff, I like that you thought about that. Good, thank you. So uh, what's, what's the solution there? If, if the problems are masks, um, well, you've heard me mention this a few times now. Um, we are a Lightspeed reseller, and um, if you haven't heard of Lightspeed, they've been around for a while. And um, one of the main benefits is we go ahead and put a very light um, kind of hands-free microphone or, or pendant. It's be a little hard to see from the picture uh, on the screen there, but it's just it's just on a lanyard that um, goes around my neck. I don't I don't really notice it. It's got a simple you know mute on off type scenario and then it's connected to either a portable or an installed uh, speaker system now unlike those old um, you know pa systems or you know you can buy some of those ones at costco or whatever the, the, those amps that are used for you know outdoor workouts and whatnot if you're the closest person to that speaker 
you're in trouble, right? You're going to get all of that volume really loud coming, you know, right at you. So a lot of the, you know, science and technology behind these sorts of products is to evenly distribute that audio to where the sound that the student in the front row is hearing from the teacher is the same, you know, level and, and, and clarity is that teacher is the student who's, you know, socially distanced at the back of the room. So it allows the teacher to move around. I'm not a tied or tethered to a particular device or anything like that. Um, I can continue to uh, obviously be socially distant, but you know, work my classroom and spend different areas working, spend time in, in different areas, but feel confident that you know, my voice is going to be projected uh, throughout that, um, that entire classroom. So switching gears from from audio for a second and looking at um, looking at camera solutions. So the, the problem with cameras is likely you're doing something right now and it's working for what you're doing right now. But remember, we've got to think we've got to think a little bit further ahead. And you know, if you remember those scenarios, not every not every state, county, district, school you know, is at the same level in terms of doing 100% virtual, doing some element of hybrid, doing, you know, all students back in the classroom. So when it was just me sitting in front of my laptop, I've got all the tools I need. I've got a built-in camera, microphone, speaker, compute, it's all there. When I start to move beyond that scenario into the classroom, I need to start thinking about more than just being tied behind my desk. Right, more than just looking at the webcam that's built into my laptop. Because there's a couple of different scenarios here that we're going to start doing again. Okay, and those scenarios are you know, the one I just mentioned in terms of you know teacher only, where there is there is an intimate you know camera, there's an intimate teaching moment here where I don't need to be dancing around the classroom or doing doing anything else. I'm staring into that camera and I'm we're having a discussion. OK, but then we're I need to move around. Right. I need to interact with, with other things. So I'm going to give my legs a stretch again and come back to that whiteboard scenario. Or I'm going to come back to what's behind door number one. And there's a there's a prop here or something that I'm showing or there's a science experiment that I'm doing here. And I need to be able to, you know, move that camera around versus carry my laptop around and put it in front of me and continually try and figure out, is it the right height or, you know, levels of zoom and things like that. And the other thing is looking at those, um, those in-room students. So when we start to look at all those scenarios, I can kind of put the cameras into two different buckets. Okay. We can look at a fixed zoom webcam where you're more likely familiar with that, that, and the analogy or the comparison I would use would be the device in your laptop, right? It's a tiny little camera that's there. It's great for two, three, five feet away, right? That's its sweet spot. Put that at the front of the room and try and figure out who the student is at the back of the room. Forget it, okay? It's not the right tool for the job. So then we can start looking at uh, PTZ. Uh, PTZ stands for pan, tilt, and zoom cameras, where I've got the ability to actually move something around. Maybe I've got the ability to set up presets, something along those lines. And if you kind of look away, hopefully you can see my, my, my picture thumbnail again. Um, I'm using one of those cameras that allows me to pan, tilt, and zoom. So here is, here is the normal view of that webcam. Right. So what a difference. I'm 10, 12 feet away from that camera and it feels like this boardroom table is is 20 feet long. So I'm able to zoom in and, you know, get a much better picture in terms of me framed. But it's now a little bit low. So I'm going to move that up a bit so you can see or I'm going to pan around to that object or that whiteboard in the corner. So you can see the benefit of that. And yeah, I'm doing this from a touch screen, but other solutions would have maybe a little remote control in my hand where I press a button and it 
that camera zooms in to a predefined area, a predefined depth, because that's the ideal spot for me to work on my interactive flat panel, for me to do work on the whiteboard, for me to show something in, as a science experiment or reading through a picture book or something along those lines. So with talking about those scenarios, there's obviously, you know, some advantages and disadvantages. So on the left hand side, when we're looking at those fixed cameras, for the most part, plug and play. There is a single USB cable, you plug it in your device, Windows or, or, or Mac recognizes it, and you know, you're off and running. We mentioned limited coverage, okay? Those are not meant for that huge 25 by 25 foot classroom or, or, or bigger that you're dealing with, okay? Some of them have built in audio, so that's a bit of a bonus. But again, back to our audio discussion, is that the right audio for your classroom? That audio might be a little bit better than the couple of microphones on my laptop, but turn your back from it, and is that webcam audio going to still be picked up? So that's where we refer back to the benefits of the HDL and whatnot. Um, most of our industry in terms of audio visual is moving towards 4K. Um, so technically, I'm using a 4K fixed camera, so it's grabbing a nice big shot of the room, and then as I zoom in, it's actually just taking that big image and kind of giving me a different, uh, a different shot from it. And I put a little asterisk beside global shortage. I don't know if you've tried to buy a webcam in the last, you know, two, three, four months, but because of work from home, um, our friends at Logitech are saying, you know, some of their stuff is, is back ordered into 2021. It's, it, it's very hard to get in terms of those models. Now the supply chain was infected and shipping and transport and all the rest of it. So they're a little bit hard to get, um, but that obviously will fix itself over time. Um, the benefits of the PTZ I've talked about already. Um, a couple of, of disadvantages, I suppose. One, as you would expect, yeah, it's a little more money, okay? It does more things. Therefore, um, there's more moving parts and things like that. Um, and there's generally a dedicated power supply to where those fixed cameras were single USB plug and play. Um, most, yeah, most of the PTZ cameras require that USB cable into your compute as well as a, a, a power source um, into the wall. Now, we've got to look at some of those scenarios and, you know, ideally a pan tilt zoom camera is going to, is going to do the trick. Maybe from a cost comparison perspective, we can do things with a fixed camera whereby I buy, I, I purchase two fixed cameras, right? And I've got one maybe placed on a, on a tripod or something like that with a little um, camera mount. And that's closer to where I'm going to be interacting. And then I can use a second camera um, built into more where I'm going through traditional lesson stuff. Now, that said, while that's a solution, we talked earlier about making things teacher friendly. Well, none of these conferencing packages make it really easy to swap cameras. I don't know if you've ever had... Uh, you know, that situation where you've got maybe a fixed camera and a second camera or a camera looking at you in the front and one looking at the back so we can get, you know, a, a, a different view of that room. It's three or four clicks into the software. So for Google Meets, I'm having to go into a settings, to a second tab, to a camera button, to a drop down. Uh, so you've got to kind of analyze what is is that worth it in that sense? Or, you know, is a PTZ a better option? Or is your single fixed camera, you know, on a long USB extension or something like that, and you're having to move that around a little bit? So um, we've seen lots of creative things, but just kind of wanted to make sure you guys understood those, um, those two differences. OK. So, I'm waiting for a prompting question. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I've got it, I've got it. Um, a lot of us, our schools have purchased us the laptops that have the camera, they have the built-in microphone and they have the speaker. What are, you know, is my laptop going to be enough for all of this, the hybrid yep. learning? 
Excellent. That's a great question, Kate. Um, now, when we when we get into this situation, um, everything's a trade-off, right? So here, what what the, the trade-off is resources. And generally, when I talk resources here, I'm talking more IT resources, things like horsepower and processing power or processing power, uh, you know, available RAM and all the things your, your, your IT team tends to worry about. OK, so we balance that with, with ease of use. Is it, is it one click to join a conference? Is it I'm running multiple computers and I need a whole production studio here in order to do you know, virtual or hybrid learning. And then, okay, well, what is my budget here? Can I afford a pan tilt zoom camera in the classroom? Can I afford a dedicated touch screen that's gonna, you know, handle my entire space? So when we look at the laptop only scenario, um, a lot of the schools and, and districts that I'm, you know, talking to, that's the starting point, right? There's no additional investment. You already have the tool. You're already used to using that tool, you know, at home and in those controlled environments. Is it going to be good enough in the classroom? Okay. For some things, absolutely. Okay. For other things where, you know, and, and think about what you're trying to do is more than likely you're running the entire video conference off of your laptop. So there's some additional, you know, work. It needs, there's some additional heavy lifting we've got to consider. We also need to then look at your presentation content. And if you're anything like me in terms of multitasking, you've probably got 10 or 12 different Google Chrome tabs open up as you're moving through content and using them as reminders and all the rest of it. There may become a stage where it's, it's too much. OK, well, my laptop needs more oomph in order to go ahead and manage that. So the solution could very well be a second computer where I have a dedicated computer. Maybe it's a little Lenovo Tiny, or I mentioned before, I'm running a Chromebox here in this room. Maybe it's your computer that's connected to your interactive flat panel, right? Whatever that scenario might be. Um, but again, with that, you've now introduced an ease of use. Not problem, but you know, it's a little bit more difficult where Okay, you've gone to your dedicated conferencing laptop computer and you've joined the meeting. That's great. Where's all your presentation content? Likely it's on your laptop. So how do you get that to share with the group? Uh, I'm doing it now via USB cable. I could also do it by joining the conference. So now you're having to join the conference two times. If I'm not really conscious about microphones and speakers and things like that. If you've ever joined two devices in the same room, you get that god awful squawk and feedback and the rest of it to where you're quickly scrambling to mute one and the other and it's it's just a mess. So, you know, having that second computer solves one problem, but you know, maybe creates another. And the other little variant of that is that um, situation I guess that I'm in right now is where I have a laptop that I've brought into this room and I have a dedicated conferencing. And I actually want to change that word there. It's more than a device, right? I have a dedicated conferencing solution here because that solution consists of four things. There is a compute. So in my case, that, that Google Chrome box, I have a touch screen that is running my conferencing application, allowing me to join the call, hang up, record, camera presets, all the rest of it. I have my camera that I'm looking at, and then I have my audio source, which in this case is that HTL 300. So all I needed to do when I walked into this room, I pressed one button on that touch screen that joined this meeting, and I took one cable, plugged it into my laptop, okay? That's a pretty slick situation. However, if you want to do this in every single classroom, Kate's going to talk about our grant assistance program because that's going to cost you, right? That is a much more expensive path than, you know, going down with a single laptop. So you can see the balance. And I, I get it. Those of you who, whose job is to, to manage that situation, we're constantly under that pressure of equity, right? I can't put 
that top high-end solution in one classroom and expect all the other teachers and students and parents to be okay with that. We need to make sure those solutions are uniform across all our classrooms. Okay. All right, so just a quick little summary here. Um, audio is your first priority, okay? If you're gonna solve one problem um, after today's session, go out and solve that audio one. Make it a, a comfortable experience for your teachers and students, make it a safe environment, and constantly be thinking about that remote participant, okay? If the audio sounds great for you in the room, fine, but what does it sound like for the remote participant? So, you know, go on a couple of calls where you're actually not in the room. If you're the teacher in that space, you know, have somebody else come in there, join that call, and you join it from a different area. Understand how that audio is going to work for your students, because without it, we don't have much of a conference. Okay? Now, identify your use case. So again, it, it's hard for us to, you know, put the blinders on and, and only be, or sorry, take the blinders off and only be thinking about COVID and only be thinking about the, the, the hybrid learning and the problems we're solving today, okay? I think what we're gonna find out of this whole experience is there's gonna be a change in behavior and there's gonna be some really good positive things that come out of this and whether it's, you know, we've got an entire generation that can now work from home for the rest of their life because they've got all the skills from, you know, going through middle and, and high school that sort of thing, or, you know, moving that experience into how we all communicate and, you know, video and audio has become such an important part of how we, how we communicate. I no longer have to drive to staff meetings and board meetings and things. I can do those effectively from, you know, the tools that have been implemented, you know, here, here in my school, you know, as an example. Okay. And then lastly, just, just coming from a, a training background, it's got to be easy, okay? We need to make sure uh, our teachers and our students have a hard enough time, you know, with, you know, adapting to curriculum and trying to get up to speed from, you know, some of the time lost at the end of last year. Uh, we don't want to put those teachers in a situation where that we've set them up for failure. But we need to recognize that the, the idea of days and days of professional development, uh, we don't have that luxury. Okay, so we need to kind of continue to balance what, what are those objectives that, that we have, what's the budget, and then how can I make sure that this system is, is, is friendly for everybody to use. Okay, Kate, I think it's on you to uh, finish this up. All right, well, thank you very much, Jeff. I think everything that you went over, um, I know, as you said, keeping we have those blinders on and only thinking about right now, but truly I was on a call just the other day with a school district that was talking about how even when they return full time January 1 to brick and mortar, a good chunk of their students are going to stay remote and they are going to still do this hybrid learning. So even though in our minds we're going to brick, we're going back to brick and mortar and it's all great, everything's going to go back to the way it used to be. It's not. So everything that you discussed today is going to have a long lifespan with an education system. So education as a whole has completely taken a different direction and teachers were kind of adjusting to that. So when we're thinking about all of this great technology that's out there, I know a lot of times we're thinking, well, all of our funding went to PPE. Well, ELB has created a gap assistance program, a grant assistance program, excuse me, um, where what we will do is it is a free program where we have a gap team who will meet with you and help you figure out what your needs are and what solutions ELB has to meet those needs. Um, again, free program, we will help you find that grant. We will write the grant for you. We um, came up with this idea just because we did see a lot of our school's funding go towards something else. Um, so the what ELB will help you find uh, the grant to meet your needs. Why? Because that funding has gone other places where we weren't planning on and how we will help you by doing this by finding the grant and writing that grant for you. 
So if you want to get in touch with the, the GAP team, the Grant Assistance Program, please email us at grants at elbglobal.com. And I'll also put that in the chat box. Also right now, what, we'll, what we have is we would like to get some information about you. So what we are going to do is I'm going to put a link in the chat box. And this is a quick survey about today's uh, session. We want to get some feedback from you. We want to know what are the things that teachers and school districts are really struggling with and what can ELB do to help you? Are there certain topics that you would like to see covered? Um, are there certain questions that you may have that you want somebody to answer? We are happy to assist you with that. If you take the time to fill out that questionnaire, uh, you will be entered to win an Amazon gift card. Hey, teachers, <laughs> we like Amazon an awful lot, just about as much as we love Target. So this is a fantastic, easy opportunity to win an Amazon gift card. Also, at the bottom of that screen, you will see our upcoming webinar sessions. Um, please feel free to reach out to us and ask any questions that you may have about these upcoming sessions or sessions that you would like to see. There's a space on that questionnaire to do so. At this time, are there any questions, comments, or concerns that you would like us to address? Okay. Well, thank you, everybody, so much for attending today. Thank you, Jeff, for all the wonderful information and um, I really appreciate everyone's time and we look forward to seeing you next week for our next webinar session. Thank you. Thanks everybody.